Alright guys, how's it going? So a YouTube user asked if I could do more tutorials and modifiers. So here's a warp modifier, ta-da! Now in traditional fashion, let's delete the cube. Now the best way I can demonstrate the warp modifier is by simply adding a plane. So I'll go to Add Mesh Plane. Now down the bottom left you can see the dialog box. Now as a quick tip, you can actually use mathematics, so I can do times 2 and that will make it 4 meters. Perfect for what I need. Now I need more topology, so I'll jump into wireframe by pressing Z and I'll add in a subdivision modifier. And I'll make the viewport 6 and I'll make the render 6 as well. Now I could keep it this shape, but I'm going to make it simple. And I'll hit apply. Now in order to use the warp modifier, we essentially need two reference points. So first of all what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add in an empty and I'll make it an arrow. And I'll move it one metre on the z-axis, just so it doesn't sit perfect. I'll then add in another empty, so I'll go to add, empty, and I'll make this a plane axis. And I'll leave it on the origin. I'll quickly select the plane. I'll come to the modifiers tab and I'll add in the warp modifier. Now it's always good practice to rename your layers. So the arrow I'll make it top and the base I'll make base. How original. So I'll reselect the plane and you can see here from and I'll make that the base to I'll make that the top. And you can immediately see what's happened. It's essentially the arrow is now controlling the deformation or the warp. So we get this really nice feature. Maybe ideal if you're wanting to do something like a crown splash. So I'll select the object and you can see here we can actually control the radius. Now the radius fall off is at 1 meter, which is how you're getting 1 meter this way and 1 meter that way. So if I put it up slightly, we get something like this. Pretty damn cool. Maybe you want to do like a black hole or something, which you wouldn't see, but hey, let's not get technical. So I'll jump back into plane and I'll show you a few other options. Now you can control the strength and you can actually control the fall off type. And these can all be keyed. So if I change the fall off type to something like a sphere, you'll see what it does. If I change it to a root, it ends up looking like a nipple. And if I do something like sharp, we end up getting this low polygon Lara Croft style. Pretty damn powerful, pretty damn good. So let me just quickly change this back to smooth and I'm going to show you how to use textures. So you can see here we can assign a new texture. So if I click new and if I click show textures in tab. Now this could be an image sequence but we'll use procedural. So we'll change this to something like distorted noise. And we get this really nice kind of Tron effect. Let me just jump into solid. Now if I move the arrow up, I can control the height. So that's pretty much the basics of the warp modifier. Now you could take this up another level. So let me select the plane and I'll add in another subdivision surface just to make things a little bit smoother. And what I'll do is I'll move the subdivision up in the modifier stack. Now you could be a little bit cheeky here and add in the wave. Let's move the wave right up to the top of the stack. So you can control it doing something like this just using the wave modifier and you get this kind of nice amplitude bounce effect. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if possible, share the video, it certainly helps. You know what to do. Peace.